I'm curious to know what brought you to Jyotish. Maybe I should have asked you this long time ago, but I'm like thinking you went so deep into it. So you started with numerology you mentioned, or how, what was well, the, how did you get drawn to it? Uh, actually, this is somewhere in uh, 1999 or 2000. It was around the, when the new century, century began. Uh -huh. so I, uh, I had a book in my house. Uh, it was, you know, I, I don't remember the name of the book, but it was a very fancy book with uh, all, you know, planets and all these descriptions. And those days, like 20, uh, so many, 25 years back, to have such a fancy book was not the norm. So I don't know from where that book came, who sent, or you know maybe which planet sent the book. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was there in my house, and uh, I used to see the book, and you know then I read. Uh, this is this, this something called as you know planets, you know like thousands of kilometers away, you know like. But this was all only astronomy. There was no information about you know Saturn or Saturn was there as a planet. But what the hell does it do in your life? <laughs> so then I kind of from that book my journey kind of started and I uh, read more uh, read 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 and then when I came into Vedic astrology I understood these bodies are not just some uh, dumb lifeless entities sitting up there and doing nothing they're actually uh, dictating us or you know not dictating rather uh, impacting us or uh, they are kind of reflecting our you know energies and and then when I understood more, I saw that uh, they just don't dictate some certain things. They are <laughs> dictating almost everything. You know, it's like <laughs> even a glass of water, will you drink it or not? Even that is like, you know, the planets are kind of uh, encouraging you, inspiring you, you know, to do that. Then uh, when I went to Chennai in South India in 2010, so there I uh, met a lot of uh, spiritual teachers, gurus, and there I started reading the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam also. So when I did that, then I understood uh, more about wha what is all this basically. It's not just, you know, some planets and it's not just your chart and dashas, transit. It, that's not the end. You know, it's like the tip of the iceberg. The, uh, the, the entire ice is below the ocean. You know, like we have the Vedas, the Puranas, Upanishads, the Sutras, Yantra, Tantra, Mudra, Mantra, and then we have Jyotish, of course. So, yeah, from 2010, I kind of started reading very, very intensely about all this. And then when I read the Bhagavad Gita, especially, I I understood what law of karma is and how to be detached. So, the Bhagavad Gita gave me a deeper understanding of the houses in astrology. No, like 12 houses, you see in the literature, they will just tell you it is detachment. And you, what the hell, I'm not detached. What do I know? If you yeah. cannot detach, what is the use of knowing the information? Right? Right. right. But if you read the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna will tell you that detachment is very important. How to be detached, how to be selfless, karma yoga, ladders, you know, like every planet will signify some level of yoga, okay? some level. Like Mercury yeah. and Venus, they are at the lower most, you know, bottom most, you know, like uh, it's like a Sakam Karmi Yoga. Okay, like Sakam means I want I want the profits basically, you know. Uh, so, yes. and then you move to Moon, which is like, you know, Nishkam Karmi Yoga, where you are not desiring anything, like the love of a mother or a father, somebody like that. And then you go to Jupiter, you know, it is like, uh, it's not karma yoga anymore, you know, that's why he gets debilitated in Capricorn, you know, there's no karma there, right? <laughs> so Jupiter is indicating like, you know, more the Gyani, Gyan yoga and all this. And, and then of course you go higher, Jupiter gets exalted in Cancer. And that is why Krishna says in the Gita that uh, Bhakti Main Param Kritwa, like Bhakti Yoga is the uh, highest of all, you know, it's at the topmost of the yoga ladder. So the yoga ladder will t teach you the planets, basically, how you how you evolve. And then lastly, I started reading uh, the fifth canto of the Srimas Bhagavatam, all the 12 cantos. So in the fifth canto, if you read, you will find description of uh, Vedic cosmology. That is like the most fascinating topic. So uh, that, that, that will actually tell you, like, when you say sun is here, uh, what does it mean? Like, you know, these many yojanas and the sun is traveling uh, around the Pushkaradweep, where is Pushkaradweep? Then 
you will always hear like you know bharat varsha bharat khanda then you will hear jambu dweep and the, these names you keep hearing so in the fifth canto of the bhagavat all these descriptions are there and there is also description of all planets like all the grahas where they are uh, there is description of rahu also you know where rahu is you know uh, what rahu does you know <laughs> which planetary system he is like you know, going then the lower planetary systems and uh, yeah yeah all this you know like guvar loka mahar loka swarga loka where these planets are like you know going around so if you read all this you will actually understand how how the zodiac is designed and there's a lot of fascination uh, information fascinating information about nakshatras and there's also information of you know uh, somebody who does you know good karma to which planet or which nakshatra the person goes after death you know all this is also mentioned okay Wow, it, that's so nice. That's so yeah. That's deep. Yeah, it is also mentioned what happens. Sup suppose uh, you go to a particular tara. Tara is like a we could say like a small tara. You go to a particular tara. What is the extent of uh, luxury you can have? That is also mentioned. Oh, wow. so all all heavenly realms, and it is said, a person who goes to a tara. <laughs> which is not a part of like literally swarga loka you could say but it is a higher realm okay who, where you go after uh, performing many 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 pious credits so it is written there uh, there is another book like you know bhugol varnanam where it is written all this and vishnu puran garud puran all this so it is said when a person goes to a tara the person gets a palace which the length is also mentioned in that <laughs> That's yes, they say that the the you could say you know radius or diameter or circumference whatever. It, yeah. it is said point uh, five yojanas to hundred yojanas. So in Vedic calculation, one yojan is around thirteen kilometers. So point five is six and half you six and half kilometers. Now can you imagine you are sitting in a house which is as big as six and half kilometers? Just just imagine for a second. <laughs> and that is like a servant quarter in the taras wow. so like you are a servant you go and you know help other people and the maximum is 100 yojanas so it is like 1300 kilometers that's like if you try to calculate the measure of cities you know the entire area I don't know you will ever find so imagine having a city this big so, yeah, if you read the Vedas, the Puranas and, you know, Nakshatras and all this, you will get a lot of information and uh, the more you read, you will realize the lesser you know. <laughs> yes. So it, it's a never-ending journey, uh, Vedic astrology and uh, journey of uh, the cosmos, you know, Vedic cosmology and modern astronomy also, so many similarities, you know, like uh, the Vedas accurately predict the distance between the sun and the moon, like uh, like in the Hanuman Chalisa, it is there. You know, Yuga Sastra Yujan Parvano. So if you make that calculation, Yuga and Sastra, like thousand Yuga, like this, uh, you will know exactly it is the distance between the sun and the moon, as it is mentioned as per modern science. So fantastic it is. So yes, the journey is like never ending, and astrology is just like a. So now, now when I read all of the other things. I kind of realize at the end, uh, astrology is like a, it's like a pebble in the ocean, you know, it is just, uh, it's just something, I mean, it, maybe it's nothing. <laughs> it's yeah, the deeper you go, yeah, deeper you go, then it's just another level, right? Yes, and yes. so much, yeah. And so many other things are there, like. Uh, we read about, you know, Ramayana, in Ramayana, like, Lord Ram went to Lanka, and, you know, when the hell is that Lanka? It is not this Sri Lanka that we know, you know, it is, a, it, it, is in a, it is a higher planetary realm, you know, like, how did they go there? And the monk, the Vanaras who went to find Sita Devi, where did they go? So, it is like, a lot of detailed description is there, and uh, things are much bigger, like, for example, we have this Himalayas, the Himalaya mountains in northern India. 
so so if you read the uh, scriptures maybe you know uh, arjun pai ji will be much uh, he, he can uh, maybe identify with what i am saying <laughs> yeah yeah i'm sure yes if you read the nakshatra story you will hear all the time you know oh this character went to the himalayas and did penance you no know? then shiva came brahma came vishnu came gave him or her some benediction but you would be surprised to know none of those uh, stories past times are related to this earthly himalayas <laughs> oh wow oh okay so there is a greater himalayas where actually shiva resides this is there you know it's like a so so there is that that so that is why if you go to the himalayas now you can see replica like yeah you, know, you will see like you know badri kashram is there in this himalayas okay but uh, badri nath is there sorry badri nath temple is there but if you go to the greater himalayas you will see badri kashram where nar narayan rishi is actually residing okay so here in this himalaya if you go you will have uh, vyas gufa where they say vyas dev is there or whatever but if you go to the greater himalayas you will actually find maharishi vyas is there the compiler of all the vedic literatures he is still there and if you read the history of madhvacharya who was one of the great sanyasi of the malva sampradaya it is said he went and met at vyas dev in the himalayas but it is not this himalaya it is the greater himalayas which is around 1000 times more bigger so the scripture say this himalaya of the earth is around one yojan and the greater himalayas is 1000 yojana so can you believe it like 1000 mount everests together how big and how great and how grand that is and that wow. also is uh, and that also is like one of the small mountain which is there in the entire region i mean there are many mountains and you will read if you read the tech, skip scriptures you will hear uh, mandar par uh, like you know gand madan parvat meru parvat you will hear all these terms okay but you will wonder you know, where are these we don't see them in the earth right so they are there in the higher realms cosmic realms you can find uh, and you can read and so many rishis you will hear like you know bhrigu then agastya bharadwaj you will see all these rishis names they are coming you know parshuram so many and you are wondering where are they why don't we find them right they are there in the higher realms and if you if you have the necessary karma and that uh, if you deserve that and you uh, you are spiritually well elevated then uh, you can interact with them you can ask questions and they they will answer so yeah that is why i said you know now when i read all, about all this uh, almost every day uh, and when i come to astrology i am like what is this this is like so small i mean this is nothing it is like <laughs> yes yeah wow that is all from my side <laughs> thank you thank you for sharing that that's really nice I, thanks I for sharing thank for you. Thank, you. thank you babaji <laughs> yeah thank you